you might recall from my video last week where I spent a bunch of time removing and disassembling the motor from my KT horizontal mill to inspect and likely replace the bearings on the rotor. Well, I certainly need to replace the bearings. Why not? I have it open. But I was completely taken by surprise at just how packed full of grease the windings and the internals of this thing were. I spent many, many hours uh, using just mineral spirits and some soft brushes to get the uh, grease out of the windings and then had uh, everything else cleaned up with a fresh coat of paint. I managed to locate a new set of bearings from a company out in California. So we are all set to get this put back together. These are greased bearings and I'm taking a little bit of a guess here on how I should put this uh, back together into the carrier. There appears to be this like grease slinger that goes on the inside here. So there's a cavity um, behind it and it seemed to make sense that that would eventually get full of grease. So I'll go ahead and preload it in there now with the grease gun. I'll do the same with each of the bearings. I'll preload it with grease. I'll squirt some in here first and then pack it in once I've uh, filled at least the one side. The grease that I'm using is from Mobile. It's Polyrex EM. It's specifically designed for bearings in electric motors. It was actually rather hard to find. Nobody seemed to have any. And then I happened to check Granger's website one day and it popped up on there that they had 80 tubes. So I ordered one. And the very next day I went back and looked again and they were sold out. Not sure why there's a shortage uh, of these, but I was glad I was able to find some. With the bearings down inside of the carrier, I'll go ahead and put a little bit more grease on this side. Well, now that there's grease all inside there and I've got the bearing pushed into the carrier, I slid it onto the motor shaft and surprisingly enough, uh, the bearing came right out of the carrier. I know it wasn't a super tight fit, but I didn't realize it was that loose. To get the bearing all the way seated on the shaft, I'm using a pipe that will fit over the shaft and rest on the inner race of the bearing. And then i um, using a hammer then to drive the bearing onto the shaft um, to its final location. I, I wish I had a press large enough to put this in. Uh, it would certainly make it a heck of a lot easier and easier to balance. But I make do with what I have. With the bearing fully seated and the carrier pulled up over it. I can now slide on this uh, cap. I'll, I'll call it a carrier or bearing cap. And to secure the cap onto the carrier, there's two countersunk screws. The rear bearing carrier and cap go on the other side of the shaft in the same manner as the front. <laughs> 
I'm temporarily installing this greaser on the bearing cap so I can fill the remaining uh, voids with the uh, motor bearing grease. When the motor is installed uh, in the mill, you can't get to the front bearing area to grease it if you needed to. So they put this tubing in its place that essentially gives you remote access to that grease from the rear of the motor. Uh, since I have the grease gun out, I'm going to go ahead and fill this tube full of new grease. Well, with the bearing caps and everything in place and full of grease, um, I can get ready to install the rotor back into the windings and get this motor buttoned up. I just need to be careful not to drop the rotor onto the windings. Uh, if there's any nick in the insulation of the windings that might cause a short with another winding, the motor is essentially ruined. It probably wouldn't be worth rewinding this motor versus just buying a brand new one. With the rotor resting in place, next I am installing the rear end bell. There are four bolts that attach the end bell to the main casting. And with that end bell in place, next is this uh, bearing retainer ring, is what I'm calling it. It sandwiches uh, between this bearing carrier and the end bell, and it's attached to both. The retainer cap can only go in really one way, um, where all of the holes will line up in the uh, bearing cap and the end bell. Um, if they're not lined up correctly, then you can't get it around the grease circs or the plug that's on the bottom of the cap. There are six screws in total, three attached to the uh, bearing carrier and the other three attached to the end bell. And apparently I had forgotten that you can't get this grease circ in with the retainer ring in place. So off it comes, then I'll put the grease circ on and then reinstall the ring. And then the last thing that goes on this side of the motor is the uh, grease plug. And the front goes together essentially the same way as the rear. The only difference being the there's no grease circ on the front. I will be installing that that extension tube. And this didn't quite go as planned. Um, like I mentioned earlier, these holes have to line up a certain way in both the end bell and on the uh, bearing carrier. And I wasn't paying particular attention when I took this apart, but when I needed to put it back together, the end bell isn't oriented in the same way as it was prior. Uh, 
So I have to now remove the end bell from the front so I can rotate it uh, so all of the holes will line up in the correct orientation. So now I just need to determine which way I need to rotate this end bell and the bearing carrier so that all the holes will line up correctly. And then lastly here is the extension tube for the front grease zerk. One of the other things I did while this was apart is I put a portion of heat shrink tubing over each of the nine wires coming off of the motor just to give them a little bit of extra protection. This 80 year old insulation is not in perfect shape. The three wires between the motor starter and the motor were originally uh, 12 gauge aluminum solid wire. I have opted to replace those with 12 gauge stranded copper wire. And to make the connections inside the pecker head more secure, I am soldering copper terminals onto the end of the stranded wire. And rather than dig out my soldering iron, I opted to use this little mini hand torch and some solder to do this job. To provide just a little bit more protection, I am putting a small piece of heat shrink tubing on it as well. To make all of these connections, it was originally with a small nut and a bolt, and I see no reason not to continue that practice. I know there are some folks out there that don't like using this method. I've even seen it myself where the uh, terminals were cut off and replaced with wire nuts, and that to me just makes absolutely no sense at all. This is a much more secure connection that will not come apart. To insulate the connections inside the pecker head, I'm just using standard electrical tape. I know there's some better options out there. Steve Summers in his rewire video mentioned another type of tape. Unfortunately, I don't have any of that, so I'm going to make do with what's in my toolbox. Interestingly enough, when I originally took apart this pecker head and disconnected all of these wires, underneath the tape that was wrapped around each one of the connections, it almost looked like there was a putty or some kind of a rubberized material that was completely encasing all of the copper and connections. I had never seen that before. Uh, kind of new to this vintage motor stuff. So I'm curious if if you know what that was. Leave a comment. I'm I'm interested to learning a little bit more about how they would have insulated these wires back in the 40s.
before I put the motor back inside the mill, I want to give it a test run. So I've taken the wires and temporarily connected them to the motor starter. Well, so far so good. I can't tell you how happy I am to see this thing run and it is really quiet. The only noise I'm hearing here is the the hum of the rotary phase converter which is about four feet to the right of the motor right now. That's about as far as I'm going to go with the motor right now. I'm not going to reinstall the motor base or the motor into the machine just yet. So before I install the motor, I want to get the coolant pump removed and serviced and cleaned. And that will make it easier for me to get the rest of the coolant lines off as well as the parking attachment so I can get it stripped and repainted. And at some point I'm going to want to remove the drive clutch as well as the um, knee power feed uh, gears just to clean all the chips and everything else that's stuck behind them. So even though it's moving slower than I'd like it, I am making some progress. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're not already a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you on the next one.